All right. Welcome back. Um, this is another New Jersey Folk Festival virtual encounter for 2020. And I've got here with me Tony Mendia. Mend Do I say your name right? Mendia, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Sorry. Tony is um, a student uh, in the New Jersey Folk Festival management team. And he's also grown up here in the Oaxacan community in New Brunswick. And I asked him if he would help us get a little taste of Oaxacan cuisine. So Tony, you went and uh, and got some mole recipes from your from your grandma, right? Yeah, my grandma and my aunt. Um, so that's mostly my grandma, my <laughs> dictating what you needed to do. Um, but yeah, I'm going to show uh, the what mole looks like for our viewers. You took some photos. And so um, Norma Mendia is your grandmother? That's my aunt. Your aunt? No, my aunt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is And then you see that is my grandma, yeah. Okay. And they were so kind as to make it. Here's the picture that you took. Mm -hmm. Could you just tell us a little bit about like what the, um, what the whole process of making mole is like? Um, so when I approached them with this idea, I was asking them to make the easiest mole, like it's something that was still Oaxaca, but um, the way I asked them is like, if I, if I wasn't here and I was somewhere far, somewhere far away and you needed to dictate it to me, just think about it like that. Cause I don't have any uh, expertise in like um, the day long process of mole. So, um this is kind of that simple uh dinner time mole that you can make right mm -hmm. uh, a little different from like the big party one what is so. the party one like like that takes all day long to make and is it yeah i mean also because you're making more right but also because it's like um like the good like the the um hardcore mole so to speak is it's like over over an open flame where you have to get the the fire going kind of how like uh the way i'll compare it is like uh the traditional br uh, briskets we see like in the south mm -hmm. where it's like a 4 a.m you get up and get the fire going type thing that's kind of like the mole uh process in the hardcore if my grandma was back in the pueblo thing is like let's get the fire going i'm um, start preparing everything and then you know and it'll be ready by like maybe three o'clock that afternoon or something for dinner ish yeah so here are some of the ingredients and it looks like this recipe this simple simplified version which people could try making at home um calls for chicken as the as the meat but the sauce has lots of different kinds of spices and and chilies in it as well yeah yeah uh so i mean and it's she made it that's the day she made just chicken so I've had it with like pork in it as well. Um, it's the same, um, but you have to cook the pork beforehand though. It's slightly different than what, um, what she described here. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I'm just gonna scroll through the directions, but we'll post them so people can, can follow along if they'd like to. But when, when uh, people are making the mole, like it's kind, of a, it's kind of like a secret recipe, right? Like everybody's got their own or, uh less less secret more like uh it's more customized and for different people you know it's like everyone makes it a little different um it depends on how like i think in the recipe there's a depends on how spicy you, you want it to be you add a certain amount of ingredients or you add different uh chiles even is, is what my grandma said but this is the way she's like made it or i guess she's like memorized it this way so and there's different kinds of mole that because I, I think I've heard that, that Oaxaca has like seven different kinds of mole. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> this is just my grandma. I like the pueblo's more mole, uh, the way she makes it, yeah. And where did your grandma come from in Oaxaca? Uh, my, my grandma's from a very small village called uh, uh, San Vicente Piñas. Um, it's just outside uh, Santa Maria Zacatepe, which is where. Um, my mom was born and my, and my aunt. Uh, so she's actually a little bit outside of town. Um, Great. Well, do you have any um, 
suggestions of how one should eat this mole? Is this like a, do any accompaniments or side dishes that go well with this kind of dish? So usually when we, uh, when uh, we're eating this, it's uh, the mole and then just uh, uh, handmade um, tortillas. And um, that's kind of, that's kind of it. And, and sometimes, um, mostly because for the younger kids, it's a little spicy, we'll add like cheese, but it's like that fresh Mexican cheese, like sprinkled on top uh, to, I guess, like curb the spice a little bit for them. But, you know, that's kind of it. Uh, no rice, no anything really. Um, Great. Uh, traditionally, we have rice with a lot of things, but um, for the mole, it's usually just mole. Um, well, I am really glad that you took the time to, and that your family members took the time to share the recipe with us. And then I understand that uh, you have your cousin helping uh, do the translation yeah. as well. Um, so thank you to all of your family members for contributing this. Uh, we had hoped to do a little bit more um, programming around the culinary traditions of Oaxaca for the festival. And I, I think this will give people um, who don't normally get the opportunity to try mole at home, maybe they can try it. Uh, we would love to see people's um, homemade mole using the recipe if you want to snap yeah. it and uh, tag us on social media. We'd love to see your mole if you try it. I hope it tastes great. Any parting words, Tony, for the mole makers who might be out there? I, I, I guess, you know, during all this, uh, try your best, I guess, to, you know, it, I guess, in, it, find the ingredients. Um, when we went out with the folk festival crew, we actually saw Felipe Tortillas, well, like, if you remember, Mm -hmm. All that stuff we could find in the back there, but I know during this time it's going to be a little more difficult to find it. But I don't know, people might have that in their pantries. Yeah. Um, but you know, I it was a lot of it was work trying to get them to explain it. I realized, especially my grandma, she's like just memorized it. She's like, I never had to explain it, and she just sat there and like tried to put together like, how do you explain how to clean chicken but do it this way? And like it was it was a weird interaction which is why my my younger cousin was helping me with a lot of it i was like i have to make calls so you, you go <laughs> so have you have you ever tried making it before um no uh, the one thing usually they don't let me assist with that but um they, <laughs> they let me help with tamales i can especially when i was little and i'd go visit my grandma in mexico we used to make these uh, tamales out of corn tamales elote they're a little sweeter and there was this like grinder where we would put all the corn in and that was my job was to like grind all the corn and make that paste to put it in the middle there. So that's the most they allowed me to help. Everything else is like, you don't know. And I'm like, I'm an adult. I can cut things if you tell me to cut them. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they allow me to help as much as they, they, they want to. So. Well, I think it's really, I mean, I think it's really beautiful that your grandma took the time to, or your, your aunt, sorry, your aunt. Well, both of them. Aunt and yeah. grandma took the time to take what was sort of like in the depths of their their memory and from their just everyday experience and pass it on to you so you could share it with us. So I really appreciate that. And tell them thanks for me. And I look forward to making yeah. it myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, give it a try. It's uh it's fun, you know. I like it super spicy, so whenever my grandma makes it, I'm all for it. I'm like, yeah. You know? <laughs> All right. Well, thanks you so much, Tony. And um, we hope you all give it a try. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone.